this is a two pulley problem where all the masses are different. The point is to find out the acceleration of this topmost mass out here. The second part is to replace the system inside this box out here, which is made up of a pulley and two masses, by an equivalent mass m such that these two systems will be identical as far as the acceleration of this top mass is concerned. So what is that equivalent mass which will replace this whole system out here? So that's the question. The straightforward way to solve this is to write the F is equal to MA equations for all the masses. And then try to solve them and figure out what the acceleration is going to be. Even in this case, you can write the F is equal to MA equations, compare the two expressions, and you would get the effective mass m. The second way, which is the more interesting method, is to figure out this mass by looking at the limits of m1 and m2, where we would know the acceleration of this m. Make them small, make them large, make them equal. So at that limit, you would know what this acceleration is going to be, or you would know what this equivalent mass should be. So that will give you what the proportionality of m should be at different cases and thereby you would be able to figure out the expression for mass m which will be the same as if you had written all these expressions uh, for the f is equal to ma and solved it so that's the more interesting approach try that out let's start with the simple case when m1 is equal to m2 as this pulley moves down but these are not going to move with respect to that pulley. They're going to stay put. If it has an acceleration downwards, the, both of them will have an acceleration downwards, which is equal. Therefore, it's as good as this whole system is stationary out here. And what is the mass of that system? It's made up of M1 and M2, both not moving, and both are equal. And therefore, you would just have the mass out here, which must be two times and that's when m1 is equal to m. The next interesting case is to see what happens if you remove one of these masses. So if m1 goes to 0, what is going to happen to m2? There's nothing holding it back, so it's going to go down with an acceleration g. There's going to be no tension in this string. Nothing is going to pull on this pulley. Therefore, the tension out here in this string also is going to be 0. And this mass 2 is going to go down with an acceleration g. Therefore, in the case when m1 is equal to 0, well, this m should also be equal to 0. Because only if this mass is 0 does this have an acceleration g downwards. Same argument goes for m2. So if m2 is a 0 when m1 is non zero, at then 2 you would need the mass to go to 0. So we have three conditions and we have to put them together. What does that tell us about M? So M must be proportional to the product of M1 and M2 because when they are zero, you should get zero. Also, dimensionally, if you look at it, the numerator has a dimension of mass square where on the left-hand side, you just need a dimension of mass. So the only way we can remove a dimension of mass from the numerator is to have both of the masses coming in symmetrically in the denominator. It has to be symmetric because the two masses out here are symmetric with respect to that pulley out. Also, one of them cannot enter individually because that would cancel them. Let's now use the condition when m1 is equal to m2. If m1 is equal to m2, then the expression we have written out there is going to be of the form You're going to get an m1 by 2, but that's not what we want. We need a 2m1. Therefore, there must be a factor of 4 in front. Therefore, the effective mass m must be equal to 4 times m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2. And that's wonderful. We came to the answer with the limits, which are very intuitive. We're going to now solve it by writing the f is equal to ma equation. So let's examine this. 
there is going to be a tension in this tree see the same tension is going to be on the other side this pulley being massless the net force on it should be equal to zero therefore there must be a tension downwards such that the sum of the two tensions out here must match the tension therefore t by 2 plus t by 2 is equal to t net force on that pulley is zero let's take a positive direction let's say forces in the upward direction is along the positive y therefore they are going to be written as a positive quantity the acceleration of this mass m is going to be a in the upward direction now let's look at m1 with respect to this pulley if this m1 has an acceleration upwards then we know that m2 should have an acceleration downwards the mass m has an acceleration upwards and therefore the pulley p must also have an acceleration downwards and that acceleration of the pulley p is going to be minus a because it is opposite to the direction of a. let us say this is the acceleration of the mass m1 with respect to the pulley p and it's in the upward direction and therefore the acceleration of the second mass with respect to the pulley now that must be just the negative of force because with respect to this pulley if this goes up this has to come down with an equal magnitude acceleration direction is opposite but with respect to an external observer the acceleration of the mass one would be the acceleration with respect to the pulley to that you would add the acceleration of the pulley and that in this case is minus similarly the acceleration of the second mass would be its acceleration with respect to the pulley plus the acceleration of the pulley itself which is minus a so now we are ready to write the f is equal to ma for all the objects let's start with writing the f is equal to ma for this mass into acceleration is equal to what's pulling it up is tension what's holding it back is the gravitational force m because that's in the downward direction and that's our equation one similarly we'll write an equation for the second one the gravitational force is m1 g downward and on this there is an m2 m1 into its acceleration a1 which is actually a1 with respect to the pulley minus a is equal to what's pulling it up that is t by 2 minus the gravity that's holding it down that's the equation let's write for the second mass m2 its acceleration is what's pulling it up that tension t by 2 minus m2 t that's equation there are three unknowns in the problem a tension t and acceleration a1 of p along with three equations one two and three so three unknowns three equations we can solve it the idea here is to figure out the tension t from these three equations and once we know the tension t out here we could compare it to the tension out in this and they should be identical if you have got the correct equivalent mass we know that the tension t naught out here has a form which is two times the product of the masses divided by the sum of the masses into the magnitude of so we're going to figure out this t from these three equations and compare it to this t naught to pull out the mass capital M. so if we carry out this manipulation we are going to get Let's see, rearrange equation one and then compare it with four. So we could take out the masses out here. 
and write it as such. And therefore, we can write this as equal to T by M minus. Before going further, let's rename this term out here. And now if we rearrange the terms out here, we are going to get T into 1 over M plus 1 over M naught must be equal to 2G, which implies that the T is equal to 2M M naught G by M plus M naught. So there we have it. Now we are ready to compare the tension T, which is in this rope out here, to the tension T naught in the equivalent system given by this expression. They look identical and this M must be M naught. And therefore, this must be equal to M or this must be equal to M naught. And this is the expression we got earlier uh, from a limits method. And so that's the equivalent mass. So in all problems in future, that whole system can be replaced by a single mass M given by this expression. Now the last part is to write the acceleration equation. It can be got from equation one where the tension is already a known quantity. Or if you remember the acceleration of this mass from a two mass simple classical pulley system, we can write it out. And the acceleration A is going to be its own mass minus the other mass, that's the effective mass, along the direction of G divided by the sum of the masses. So that's the acceleration and the final part of the problem. 